Definitive Treatment of Pelvic Ring Injuries. This is from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series Version 5. Slides are by Dr. Gerard Allen and I'm Saqib Rahman narrating. First video, we talked about concepts of stability, tile classification, uh, and how that um, uh, leads to management decisions. In the second video, we focused a lot on posterior ring reduction and fixation methods. And in the last part of this slide deck, uh, we're going to talk about anterior pelvis reduction and fixation methods. So these include external fixation. These include internal external fixation, so-called infix methods. Uh, they include percutaneous ramus screws, either anterograde or retrograde. They include open plating of pubic uh, symphysial disruptions, as well as open plating of ramus fractures. So external fixation, we talked about this in the acute management of pelvic ring injury uh, lecture video, uh, where this can be done to temporize a patient in extremis. Uh, maybe you have a patient who is undergoing um, uh, pelvic packing, for instance, uh, or had a laparotomy, and uh, you need to uh, still have temporizing uh, anterior um, com you know, compression of the pelvis. Uh, to close things down. It could be done provisionally uh, when you're uh, trying to get the anterior and or posterior pelvic ring reduced. So let's say you're going to do a plate fixation or iliosacral screws and you just need the ring reduced. So an X-fix, sometimes you can attach these pins to a distractor, can provisionally hold things together. Uh, and sometimes it's definitive. Uh, if you have, let's say, anterior pelvic ring comminution and you really don't think it's appropriate or necessary to have to go and plate everything, uh, and it's a not, not amenable to percutaneous fixation, then sometimes if an X-fix can be kept in place. Maybe you have a dirty open pelvic injury that's difficult to get um, sterilized enough, uh, with bladder injuries, etc. cetera. Uh, occasionally there may be a role for definitive X-fix. So the infix is sort of another uh, um, kind of uh, wrinkle to that where Let's say you do need those same indications, bilateral ramus fractures uh, that don't uh, necessarily, are not amenable, let's say, to percutaneous fixation or uh, need um, a little bit more rigid fixation, uh, but you don't want to have these pin sites draining, then you tuck everything under the skin. So this is for long-term definitive treatment of certain, certain anterior pelvic ring injuries because those pin sites are no longer sticking out the skin. You can decrease pin site infections. Um, and you, you have the bar much closer to the pelvis than the external bar of, a fix, of an X-fix. So you have increased biomechanical strength, but you might have to go back in there to take these out. And um, if you're not careful, they can cause femoral nerve palsy or other injuries. So there is a little bit of a learning curve. So when you're doing X-fix, especially when you're doing anterior inferior iliac spine or AIIS pins or an infix the pins are placed in the same place you need to get these views the combined outlet obturator oblique um, so we're looking at the left pelvis and you're sort of looking at this uh, area let's get the pen going here we're looking at this area right here okay uh, and then on your iliac oblique you want to make sure that fixator pin in the AIS is not going too far this way and certainly not going here into the uh, greater sciatic notch. And then the combined inlet obturator oblique view shows you um, if the pin is headed towards the, um, you know, it should be kind of headed in this direction towards the PSIS. So that's kind of the same thing I was just illustrating for you. Those are the correct trajectories or correct location where you want your fixation to be on those views. Now, there are some videos if you want to head over to otaonline.org. And if you don't have access, get access, and you can um, watch some pretty high-quality videos on this. So um, you can do an LC2 screw. So this is something you can do for a crescent fracture fixation, uh, for example. Um, so um, similar uh, basic technique uh, to your X-fix pins, similar technique for your, um, with these uh, special views to place this. Um, and sometimes you can get more than one screw as shown here. Um, 
pubic symphysis. So this is done, you know, you do an anterior approach. You um, go between the um, rectus and the bladder. And um, once you get the bladder out of the way, you're going to do direct reduction. So uh, this can be done with a pointed reduction forcep, as shown below. You can do two screws and a young bluth clamp, as shown, I'm sorry, below the um, Weber clamp is shown above, the young bluth clamp. Uh, young blue clamp technique shown below. Um, these are a couple of different techniques. Again, you can use fixator assisted reduction as well, where you have pins in the in the um, in the uh, iliac wings to help with your reduction. As we mentioned in the acute management lecture, um, you also want to maybe tape the ankles, tape the knees together, do anything you can to help close down the pelvis so you're not fighting all of that when you're going to get this reduction. And screw, screw reduction with a young bluth clamp or ferro bluth clamps can be really, really powerful, especially with the young bluth clamp. Um, and then we will typically fix these with um, a superior plate on the pubic um, symphysis with at least two, two to three screws on either side of the symphysis. Um, if you really need a lot of stability, you could add a second orthogonal plate anteriorly, um, or if you're doing revision surgery, for example, um, and there have been some uh, examples of indirect reduction per cutaneous fixation, but typically it's going to be done like this. Ramus screws. So percutaneous ramus screws um, can be done. The anterior and inferior pubic ramus bone morphology is a little bit undulating, so you have to be really careful. These can lead to in-out-in screws. Um, the safest position for ramus screws is superior and a little bit posterior. Um, so... This, you know, demonstrates that blue line on the left demonstrates how you could be in, out, in if you're too inferior, for example. Uh, and if you're too anteriorly on the inlet view on the right, you can see how you could be in, out, in as well. So what about retrograde screws? Well, retrograde screws are uh, passed um, from anterior to posterior. The spermatic cord passes three centimeters lateral to the midline, so it's really close to the starting point for your retrograde Ramus screw, so you got to be really careful in certain um, male patients that uh, you don't injure this. So when you're doing percutaneous ramus screws, these are the views that you're going to get. Um, combined outlet obturator oblique view, and um, you know we're looking at the uh, ramus fract ramus superior ramus on the right hemipelvis here. And then uh, on the inlet view, uh, we want to confirm our anterior and posterior borders are safe. And then that combined inlet iliac oblique view on the right helps to show the anterior and posterior borders of ramus. So that's kind of what your screws should look like if they're well contained. So what about anterior pelvic ring plating? Well, if you have uh, comminuted injuries, uh, not just a symphysis, but coming across the ramus, uh, and, you know, an X-fix or ramus screws just aren't ideal. Maybe you have to go in and just plate across everything. And here there's a lot of twists and turns and curves, so careful plate contouring is essential. Um, occasionally you may need to use more than one plate. Uh, here you can see uh, there are, um, you have to work around the hip joint, so you can see the red ascaris showing super acetabular cortical screws. You have to be really careful with your quadrilateral, uh, quadrilateral surface screws that you don't end up uh, intra-articular. Um, and to do this safely, you'll have to get multiple views as shown here. And some patients' bony morphology may not really allow for safe placement of this. So what about biomechanics? Well, um, two-screw construct. With, uh, is inferior to greater than two screws. Um, so this is sort of like a dynamic or flexible technique that was done for a short period of time. Um, so we generally fix these a little more rigidly now. Anterior pelvic ring fixation can definitely increase your pelvic ring stability. Uh, retrograde ramus screws have a higher incidence of failure than antegrade screws. Keep that in mind. And um, anterior X fixes do provide some posterior compression although they're like if you put on an X fix on the front of the pelvis, it doesn't provide as much compression in the back as you'd imagine if you think about it as a C clamp or iliosacral screws. All right, let's shift gears a little bit before we wrap up, talk about outcomes. So 
Mortality, 86 to 9.1%, largely due to associated injuries in these patients. Uh, but remember, the open fractures uh, do have uh, an incidence of um, uh, mortality that's higher than in other patients. Mortality and transfusion requirements are much higher with APC3s, for instance. We talked about this in the acute uh, management lecture also. Uh, lateral compression fractures have higher chest related injuries than APC. So another thing to keep in mind. This also comes from the uh, shock trauma, uh, young Burgess data. And APC injuries have higher abdominal uh, associated injuries than lateral compression. So hardware failure uh, can happen in quite a high uh, frequency of cases. You can see an example here of a broken pelvic plate. A lot of the modern plates nowadays also have a reinforcement of that central part of the plate where you have to do a lot of contouring and there's a lot of motion potentially and stress at that symphysis. Um, so uh, you can break the plate uh, and occasionally screws will pull out. Ramus screws can pull out. Uh, dyspareunia, erectile dysfunction, these are issues as well. Um, a lot of times there are questions that uh, come up with a patient, especially if, you know, let's say if a female patient needs to um, have vaginal delivery or would like to have vaginal delivery of a baby in a future pregnancy. Um, this can be challenging and many women uh, will uh, go on to have C-sections um, at, at higher rates, although this um, is still not we don't have great, great data on, on this. There's certainly some data showing vaginal delivery can be safe in many instances. So thorough knowledge of normal dysmorphic and pathologic anatomy is critical for treating pelvic ring fractures. The patient's overall injury burden can often affect definitive management. Factors such as the soft tissue envelope, prior embolization, prior abdominal and urologic surgery has got to be taken into account when you're planning. Surgical treatment options exist in a spectrum of invasiveness, so choose the least invasive technique, which often going to be like percutaneous screws. That will also give you a good reduction when possible, um, but sometimes you'll have to go to more invasive techniques to get a better reduction and stability. Ensure the posterior pelvic ring is well reduced. Uh, this will often require the anterior uh, pelvic uh, fixation to sort of protect the posterior ring. And uh, these are the references. Thank you very much.